Hi, I'm Attack May and welcome back to another video. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing an anime that I finally got around to seeing, Kamisama Kiss, also known as Kamisama Hajime Mashite. But before I get into the review, I just want to say that this video will contain spoilers. So if you haven't seen Kamisama Kiss, I recommend you go watch it and then come back. I will only be covering the anime in this review though, not the manga as I haven't read it. But now onto the review. Kamisama Kiss is a funny romance shoujo anime. It consists of two seasons, the first being 13 episodes long and the second being 12 episodes long, two OVAs following season 1 and five OADs that follow season 2 and give an ending to the anime. It first started airing in 2012. The anime revolves around a girl called Nanami Mimizuno and starts off with her being abandoned by her father. Leaving her alone with a pile of debt accumulated from his gambling, Nanami is unable to pay rent and is kicked out of her home. Homeless, she ends up in a park and comes across a strange man hanging from a tree afraid of a dog. Nanami saves him and learns that his name is Mikage. She tells him about her situation and in return for her kindness, Mikage offers her his own home, drawing her a map and then disappearing completely. With no other option, Nanami happily accepts and follows the directions to his house. But once she gets there, she realizes that his home isn't a house, but in fact a shrine. On her arrival, she is greeted by the shrine keepers Onikiri and Kotetsu and a fox yokai called Tomoe who used to serve Mikage as his familiar. She learns from them that Mikage is actually the land god of the shrine but when he met her, he bestowed his mark on her, making her the new land god. With no other choice but to take on this new position, Nanami becomes the new land god of the Mikage Shrine. With the help of Onikiri, Kotetsu, and Tomoe, who with a bit of persuasion agrees to be her familiar, Nanami works to be the best land god she can. Along the way, Nanami meets various new interesting characters and even falls in love with Tomoe, but soon learns that love between yokai and human is taboo. The first thing about Kamisama Kiss that I want to talk about is the world it's set in. It seems like a normal world off the bat, but a few minutes in we're introduced to god, yokai, and familiars. The whole lot. The anime is about a human girl becoming a land god after all. I've always enjoyed movies, TV shows, and anime set in the supernatural fantasy kind of world, one of my favourites being Noragami. There's just something exciting about it all. I think the supernatural culture in Japan is really interesting and something that isn't explored as much in the western world. We have plenty of scary movies about ghosts and phantoms, but not much that explore gods, familiars, and shikigamis. It's refreshing to watch and different from many fantasy-based anime. This kind of setting opens up a world of crazy and imaginative events. The possibilities are endless, and that's what makes it so fun. You don't know what to expect, and you learn to not be shocked by how bizarre things can get. Kamisama Kiss utilizes this, not holding back, some examples being when a sky god turns Tomoe into a toddler in order to try to convince him to become her familiar, or when a beach trip turns into a rescue mission due to the Dragon King of the Sea putting into play a revenge plan 526 years in the making against Tomoe. This is due to Tomoe pissing him off by ripping out his eye, which by the way is known as the longevity elixir and gives great power to those who drink it. See what I mean? What's also fascinating is the rules of the different supernatural beings set in terms of relationships and contracts. Like for a god and familiar to form a contract, they must kiss, or how relationships between yokai and humans are forbidden, which is made crystal clear at the very beginning. Having a human girl thrown into this is hilarious. Seeing her adapt from a normal boring life to a life on the whole other side of the supernatural spectrum is entertaining and quite funny. Now one thing that can really determine if anime is good or bad is the main character. I'm sure we all have main characters that we adore, some of mine being Edward Elric from Fullmetal Alchemist and Yona from Yona of the Dawn. And then we also have those main characters that we can't stand, my pick being Mei Tachibana from Say I Love You. For me, Nanami fell into the former category. I really liked her character. She isn't what I hate to categorize as a basic, quiet, helpless, lonely girl who has to depend on others for everything. She's actually quite the opposite. Nanami is a bubbly, kind, talkative, positive, and simple-minded girl the last being a trait that Tomoe likes to pick on, but stands out amongst the gods and yokai as a change of perspective. Nanami always says what's on her mind and is quick to find a solution to any problem. She's the kind of girl that will jump into action without thinking, which usually lands her in trouble, but she always takes responsibility for her actions. Tomoe is quick to offer his help to Nanami, wanting her to depend on him, but she strongly refuses wanting to depend on no one but herself. At the start especially, even though Nanami is completely new to being a land god, she doesn't let that stop her from working hard to develop her spiritual powers while balancing her schoolwork and shrine responsibilities at the same time. It does help that she has Tomoe by her side, but she manages to handle most things by herself and is determined to improve. It is these character traits that make Nanami a likeable character. We're all too used to the damsel in distress character, but Nanami is not that girl. Personally, I found Nanami very relatable and like a breath of fresh air. Kamisama Kiss is a very character-driven anime. It's not an anime with one huge captivating plot, but instead is split into lots of mini plots. 
So the anime compensates with the characters who are ultimately the main focus of the story. During season one, a lot of the plot is created by the introduction of new characters, some becoming recurring fan favorites such as Mizuki and Kurama. Season two is quite similar in that sense, but also develops some of the characters we first met in season one, Kurama in particular during the Mount Kurama arc, which spans over four episodes. I really like the range of characters in Kami Kiss and how they all fit together, especially the recurring characters. I already talked about Nanami, so I'll go on to talk about the others. My favorite character from the very beginning was Tomoe without a doubt. Excuse my moment of fangirling, but oh my god, I love Tomoe so much. Like, he's just amazing. I think all the girls watching here can agree with me. I mean, Tomoe's looks, his white hair, his fox ears and tail, and his devilish smirk. His pretending to not care attitude, when in fact he cares a lot, and how he would do anything for Nanami. Need I say more? But moving on, Tomoe is a great character, and no, not just because he's attractive. I really like his personality, how he's straightforward and blunt and likes to mock and tease people, mostly Nanami, which results in a lot of funny scenes, but he can also be very charming when he wants to be. I also love how devoted he is to Nanami, how he would put his life on the line for her. There's depth in Tomoe's character, his limited trust in people stemming from his abandonment issues due to Mikage leaving him without a word. What I liked the most though was seeing Tomoe's development. At first, he's very hostile to humans, including Nanami. He looks down on them and treats them as lower beings. He's also very closed off. But as the anime progresses, his view on humans changes, Nanami playing a huge part in that change. He starts to soften up and show that he cares. And by the end of the anime, his indifference to humans is completely abolished and he even decides to become a human. Yeah, I really love Tomoe. I also really liked Mizuki. My first impression of him was someone who just wanted to steal Nanami away. And being the huge Nanami Tomoe shipper that I am, I didn't really like him at first. But then when I learned about his sad backstory and how he was just lonely without his god, my feelings started to change and he actually became one of my favorite characters. So I was really happy when he became Nanami's familiar. I love how adorable and mischievous he is, his undying loyalty to Nanami being his strongest asset. Kurama too was another who I liked. At first introduced as a pop idol with swarms of fans, he actually turns out to be a Kurtangu from Mount Kurama. He wanted to steal Nanami's godhood, but her kindness caused him to give up and he actually became pretty fond of her. His bad boy attitude combined with his willingness to help people and his understanding of humans is a nice mix. Some characters that we saw every now and again but who I wish got more screen time and story include Himemiko, Ami, Otohiko, the wind god, and of course, Mikage. Another thing that I really liked about kami -san Kiss was the time travel aspect. We watched Nanami travel back in time several times, all to save and learn more about Tomoe. The final arc of the anime, the past arc, is all about Nanami going back to the past to save Tomoe from a curse. What I like about time travel is getting to see characters in a different way. It was shocking seeing how different Tomoe was 500 years ago. He was murderous and cruel and uncaring, almost completely unrecognizable. I also like seeing the choices the characters made to reach their present. The past is intriguing and connected to the present through many threads, any of which can be broken by time travel. We get to watch Nanami desperately trying not to change things too much in the past, but as with most time travel stories, the tiniest thing can cause a huge change, sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse. I like seeing those changes play out. The first time we went back to the past, I was worried that seeing Tomoe would change Nanami's feelings for him, but thankfully that wasn't the case. I think, like me, Nanami liked getting to know the whole Tomoe and appreciate how he had changed. We get to see the journey Tomoe went on to get to where he is today. And ultimately, it was love that changed him. Cliché, I know, but it's a cliché I never get sick of. In a weird roundabout way, Tomoe had always loved Nanami. We had originally thought that his first love was a woman called Yukiji, but it actually turned out to be Nanami acting as Yukiji. But the best thing about the past arc was watching Tomoe fall in love for the first time. It was adorable because he had never been in love before, so it was completely new to the whole idea and feeling. The result was a much more open and innocent Tomoe, who fought with the feelings he couldn't understand until he came to accept them. I especially enjoyed this because in the rest of the series, Tomoe knows love and hides his feelings from Nanami. Kamisama Kiss's only fault would be how it jumped around a bit between narcs in season 2 and didn't really tie up loose ends. I don't know how it is in the manga, but it felt a bit rushed to me. We never got a proper ending to Akura O's story. We got this whole build up and fascinating backstory, but then no climax or finale. Maybe the creators were hoping for a season 3 where this arc could be developed more, I don't really know. But I wish they'd given more focus to this arc and a resolution because I'm curious and it's not fair to the audience to leave them hanging like this. Now, if you had to ask me what my favourite part of Kamisama Kiss was, that would be easy. Nanami and Tomoe's relationship. As I said before, I love both of their characters and I loved all their interactions. The hilarious ones, the angsty ones, the emotional ones and the cute ones. They never fail to make me feel some type of way. It was cute watching them slowly fall in love with each other and come to terms with their feelings. What I would give for more adorable scenes between the two. Honestly, they're one of my favourite anime couples. And that's why I was so happy they ended up together in the end. 
I was really pleased with Kamisama Kiss's ending. Although I felt rushed, came almost completely out of nowhere and had me feeling like I'd missed something, Nanami and Tomoe ended up together and everything is right in the world. I did not expect Tomoe to agree to being human so willingly, nor did I expect them to ponder over it for a year, resulting in a one year time skip. So it felt a bit strange to me. And I admit that I was sad that Nanami and Tomoe would no longer be part of the supernatural world, so we wouldn't get to see Mizuki, Onikiri, Kotetsu, and the other gods anymore. But I can't deny that I was satisfied with the ending. A happily married human Tomoe and Nanami, what more could I want? So to wrap it all up, I really liked Kamisama Kiss. Even though it didn't stand out much in terms of animation, plot, or soundtrack, it had lovable characters, interesting story arcs, and an adorable couple that you couldn't help rooting for. I think all anime are made for different purposes. Kamisama Kiss is not a high stakes, the world is ending anime, nor is it an anime with a complex psychological story. It was simply a lighthearted romance shoujo meant to make you happy, and that it did. So thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought of Kamisama Kiss in the comments, and if there are any other anime that you would like me to review next. And of course, feel free to like and subscribe. Until next time, bye!